An administration in limbo, the president's first cabinet meeting of 2019 showcased just how much turnover this White House has seen just in the past year. At least seven people are serving as acting secretaries or department chiefs until permanent replacements are named. Two of them with front row seats, replacing Jim Mattis for now. Acting Secretary of Defense Pat Shanahan to the president's right, as you see there, and filling Ryan Zinke's post, Deputy Interior Secretary David Bernhardt to the president's left. So with their stand-ins in place, John Kelly and James Mattis joined two other military generals who left the Trump administration. Generals who the president often called his most treasured advisors. But after two years in office, the president seems eager to minimize those military minds, ignoring Kelly's advice. And listen to what he said about Mattis just moments ago. You can talk about our generals. I gave our generals all the money they wanted. They didn't do such a great job in Afghanistan. General Mattis was so thrilled. But what's he done for me? How has he done in Afghanistan? Not too good. Not too good. I'm not happy with what he's done in Afghanistan, and I shouldn't be happy. As you know, President Obama fired him, and essentially so did I. To be clear, James Mattis resigned in protest. With me now is Peter Bergen, CNN national security analyst who has an op-ed on CNN.com about the president's war with his generals. Uh, Peter, thanks for coming on. I mean, clearly the president is peeved over Mattis's departure and how it all went down, of course, with that resignation letter. They were not able to see eye, eye to eye on Syria or Afghanistan for that matter. But what do you make of the president's criticism? Well, it's startling because, you know, I mean, go back two years, um, Jim Mattis, a retired four-star, was Secretary of Defense. John Kelly, a retired four-star, was Secretary of Homeland Security and Chief of Staff. Uh, Mike Flynn, retired Lieutenant General, was National Security Advisor when he left. Uh, uh, McMaster, also a three-star general, was hired as National Security Advisor. The place was rife with uh, mm -hmm. the kind of the leading military figures of the generation. Now. Uh, President Trump has really kind of attacked Mattis personally in this press conference, saying he fired him, which is untrue. Uh, he has fired, uh, essentially got rid of John Kelly at the same time as getting rid of Jim Mattis. Uh, he is in a war of words with uh, Stanley McChrystal, retired four-star general, uh, who he's uh, described Obama fired him like a dog. Uh, he's had a spat with uh, Admiral McRaven, who of course was the architect of the Bin Laden raid. Um, and it's hard, to th it's hard to think of a you know, leading military leader uh, that he hasn't been in a war of words with in the last several months, which is so strange because even in this press conference, he was saying that he thought of himself as potentially a great general. He and did. this is a guy who went to a military boarding school, uh, avoided uh, service in Vietnam, taking five de deferments. But he does seem to have a great respect, at least in theory, for the U.S. military. But that respect, when it comes to particular personalities, now seems to have evaporated. And let's listen to more of his remarks. We have an area that I brought up with our generals four or five weeks ago where Taliban is here, ISIS is here, and they're fighting each other. I said, why don't you let them fight? Why are we getting in the middle of it? I said, let them fight. They're both our enemies. Let them fight. Sir, we want to do it. They go in and, and, and they end up fighting both of them. It, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. I think I would have been a good general, but who knows? All right, so you go from a president who once loved surrounding himself with generals to then mocking the general, seemingly. What do you make of the shift? Uh, you know, uh, I'm not a psychologist, psychologist so I don't know. Uh, but, um, you know, President Trump has said many times uh, various versions of I know better than everybody else. During the campaign, he famously said that he had a, you know, he knew how to fight ISIS better than the generals who were then fighting ISIS. So it seems to be part of his sort of tendency to basically denigrate other people. Um, mm -hmm. We've seen him do that with, I mean, usually there's sort of a bromance with a lot of the kind of, and these are bromances, not romances, right? With so many members of his cabinet who are men, uh, and then the bromance fades and they're, and they're gone. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a pattern we've seen repeatedly, which yeah. is, as you pointed out, Pam, why there's so many acting people yeah. at, this, at, this, at this meeting today. It is interesting, it, talking to White House officials, um, they do say that they've noticed the president relying more on his own instinct, his own gut, rather than listening to advisors like his former chief of staff outgoing today, uh, John Kelly. And that was really frustrating to, I know, Kelly and to Mattis as well. Um, Peter Bergen, thank you for coming on, sharing your analysis. Thank you, Pam.